Whenever someone mentions parrying, what do you think of? More often than not, people often think of some kind of move that deflects or diffuses an opponent's move, often leaving them open to counterattack. It is most often associated with fencing, but it also applies to fighting sports like kickboxing or boxing. But if you're someone like me, a fucking gamer, and chances are that you are, as you have clicked on this video, then the first thing you think of is EVO Moment 37. To explain it simply, EVO Moment 37 is a legendary comeback where Daigo Umahara has to parry all of Justin Wong's super, as otherwise he will die from chip damage, with the added tension that comes from being the game-winning match. So to really nail in how crazy this is, to parry in this game, Street Fighter Third Strike, you need to hit forward within a tenth of a second before you get hit, and Daigo had to land that hit throughout the whole super. All 15 hits, each with their own timing, and one of them is in the air with the jumping hit. Seems impossible, right? Not for Daigo. Not only did he parry the super, but he turned it around by countering with his own combo, ending with his own super. That is what a parry is. A simple move that feels good to pull off when executed perfectly. So imagine if a developer takes that concept and basically makes that a video game. Oh hey, there's one right there! <laughs> Look, there's a reason why this was Game of the Year 2018. Sekiro, Shadow Strike Twice, is a game where you take control of Wolf, taking revenge on a clan who has imprisoned him and kidnapped his master. It is also a FromSoft game, so naturally it is very difficult. You will see the screen a lot. But because of that harsh difficulty, in combination with the really responsive movement and attacks, mixed in with a generous helping of reaction tests, maneuvering, and most importantly, parrying, the game ends up having this really cool kind of flow to its combat, which is the game's main selling point. You literally live or die by the parry system, as it is your main means of dealing with most enemy attacks, as it will often leave them open for a thrashing, and man does it feel good to parry in this game. Quick side tangent. There's a term used in games known as game feel. That alone is a topic I could talk about on its own, but for the sake of this video, I'll keep it simple. Game feel is simply how good it feels to play a game. Usually, games with good game feel are incredibly responsive with consistent, tight controls all around, like these games. Sekiro falls squarely in that category with quick traversal of the terrain, a grappling hook to get to higher areas quickly, and combat that flows between offense and defense smoothly. So how does that combat flow in Sekiro? When in battle, your main options for offense are a light attack and a heavy attack, options that will gradually expand as you continue playing the game. For defense, you have dashing and jumping to avoid attacks, usually the unblockable variety, and blocking and parrying for everything else. One of the main mechanics of the game is the posture meter. Basically, your posture meter is an orange bar that fills up as you or your enemy blocks attacks. If it fills all the way up, your posture gets broken, which isn't good because it leaves you open to attacks. It does slowly decrease by not moving or walking. But what makes that interesting is that it decreases slower if you or your opponent has less HP. So the main goal in combat, especially for the harder encounters, then involves from defeating enemies normally, even though you still can, to dealing damage so that their posture recovers more slowly, and then breaking your opponent's posture to land a killing blow, which will instantly kill the enemy. So what's the best way to deal posture damage to your enemy? Well, I mean I have been showing you throughout this whole video, but Listen, shut up, it looks, it looks cool, okay? I like it. And you better too, because I'm talking about it, which means it's a good, this is good. Not only does it look cool, but it's the most consistent way to deal posture damage. To parry in this game, you need to time a block just when the foe goes to attack you. I mean, it's not Street Fighter hard, there's a bit of leeway on the timing, but generally it has to be around when you would normally get hit. Everything about parrying in this game has been polished to a mere shine. The animation of Wolf using a quick movement to redirect the slow attack, 
the animation of the adversary changing from attack to a little stagger, the huge clash effects that really sells the impact of the attack being redirected, and the oh so satisfying ting sound effect that plays alongside it. No matter what game it is, landing a parry will forever remain a satisfying mechanic to land. But Sekiro isn't just any game. It's Game of the Year 2018. You really think Wolf only has one type of parry in this game? Aside from the regular parries, one of the skills you unlock allows him to parry certain unblockable attacks that involve a thrusting motion by dashing towards the enemy at just the right time. When you land it, Wolf goes to redirect his foe's attacks towards the ground by stomping on their hand and the weapon it's holding into the ground, with all the satisfaction of a regular parry, dealing massive posture damage as the weapon kicks up dust from the stomp, and the big, stompy sound effects that comes with it. God, that's so satisfying to land. And also, while not exactly a parry, Wolf can also counter certain other unblockable attacks similarly, usually sweeping attacks, by jumping on the opponent's head, keeping all the satisfying sound effects and effects that come with it. Eventually, you get to a point in the game where some enemies acquire the ability to shoot lightning. Yeah. Yeah. You can deflect lightning itself. I don't think any amount of words can probably convey the utter swagitude of this move. So, I'll just let the clip play. Holy shit, he's deflecting lightning! <laughs> you have the power to not only absorb the blow of electricity, but also redirect it to your enemies in a huge arc. You must attack before you land, however, as otherwise you'll be the one in shock. And by that I mean you'll die. <laughs> okay, yeah, logically it doesn't make the most sense, but it's fucking cool, so who cares? What I think elevates the parrying in Sekiro in particular to the next level is because it's a FromSoft game, known for their harsh but fair difficulty. There's always an inherent risk-reward to parrying, as you're often leaving yourself open until the last possible second, but reap the benefits if you pull it off. But the beauty of that is that in Sekiro, that risk is amplified to another level, as enemies can and will combo you if you aren't careful, and it's overall a better idea to parry, as it also prevents your stats from being broken. But hey, that's just me. What do you think about the parry system in Sekiro? I hope I sparked some interest for you to play it, because it's well worth the price if you're looking for a challenge. God, this game's cool. Alright, later.